Hi there, here we have the wireless photo cell, Photo DV Plus. Today I'll be showing you how to set one up uh, and how to wire one in. Uh, so regarding positioning on photo cell, uh, you want to position it at around 600 to 800 mil high um, and as close to the gate close as possible. Um, this is the best position for these, um, so they work the best. The good thing about the wireless photo cell is that this side doesn't require any um, cabling. As you can see, there's no cables going anywhere through it. Um, it just runs on a battery. Now the battery lasts around one to two years, um, so, so do bear that in mind. Now when I set one up, um, you can see that I have it at a bit of an angle here um, because they can actually adjust uh, 180 degrees. So you can mount them in any way you want to to get the best position. So when you set one up, all you need to do is, is attach the backing on. You've got your actual photo cell and then your, your little bracket that sits on top. So when you adjust them, you want to you keep it a little bit loose uh, for now. Um, as you will need to probably adjust them once you have the other side up and running so you can test to make sure that they're all aligned properly. Um, so when I chuck the battery in, there will be a tiny flashing light on this corner. It's very hard to see and it's very faint um, so that it doesn't drain the batteries at all. Um, and for these dip switches, you want to keep them by default off, both of them, because you're just using them as a photo cell, you're not using them for anything else. Um, and then we'll move on to the other side. Photo cell. Uh, so this cable runs directly from your gate, gate motor controller straight into the photo cell. So the wiring is pretty simple. So the first terminal on this side, the black cable, that runs to common. The red cable next to the black one, uh, that runs to 24 volt. And then the next two are your common and FT, FT1 for your actual relay. Um, so you just wire it in like so. the wires are all tight. I've taken this uh, bit out from the bottom just to make it easier to get the cables in but you can just simply clip that back in. It just clips in like that. Um, otherwise you will struggle to get the cables in if you don't take that out. Um, and then just feed your wire back in. So I've switched uh, the photo cell on now. Uh, every, all the wires are in, are in um, and I'm just adjusting it uh, right now, so you can see there, there are two lights. There's a flashing light and then a solid light. The solid light means the photo cells are actually connected um, and aligned. So if I adjust that, you'll see that that solid light turns off. So you basically need to make sure that that solid light is positioned on. Just below that. Uh, and then you just need to fix it, fix it correctly and make sure that it doesn't move uh, with the screws provided. And then you're good to go. Chuck the covers back on, the screws back in, uh, and then uh, and then you can just test it. So if you have your photo cell already installed uh, and they've stopped working, uh, the main cause of that issue is either the covers getting dirty uh, or insects have gotten inside. Um, so just clean the cover inside and out, and just make sure you get rid of all the insects and things like that that are inside. A good practice to prevent insects and bugs getting in is using silicone on the cable holes uh, and the screws as well um, and just, just ensuring that the cover is nice and clean and, and, and is, is wiped every now and again uh, just to ensure longevity of the photo cell. And just pop the cover back on once everything's cleaned uh, and you should be good to go. So once you have your photo cells mounted uh, and aligned um, you'll see the lights and stuff and they're all working. Um, you go to the control board, uh, you wire it in, obviously common and FT1, um, and you've got your power as well, 24 and common. Um, so the first thing you want to do on the control board is push test. So test basically just shows you what faults or errors are coming up on the board. So at the moment we've got 25 coming up. Um, you can look in the manual, the manual shows you what all the faults are uh, and, and how to stop them or how to uh, get rid of the faults. Um, so 25 is pretty easy to get rid of. By default the sensing edge is enabled um, so we must go in here and disable that which is on parameter 73. So go all the way up to 73 and you want to disable it. To disable it you just go to minus and go to zero and you'll see it flash in. 
Um, yep, and then you're good to go. So now if you push test, you see the fault has now changed from 25 to 23. Um, so we've gotten rid of fault 25 and now we're getting fault 23. So if you are getting that, that means your photo cells are either not wired in correctly or they're not uh, meeting eye to eye so that uh, there's no closed circuit. So you'll see here, once I wire in FT1, so if I create a mimic circuit here for my photo cells um, and I push test, you'll see that the, the error code has disappeared and it's now showing 00. zero. So that means your photo cells are working fine. Uh, you can also see this by uh, the lines on here. So if I remove that, you'll see that that top line disappears and it comes back. Um, test also shows the same thing. 23, when I pull the, pull the wire out, and 0 when I put it back in. It's a good way to test your photo cells as well. Um, so once you're getting 0, 0, you know your photo cells are working uh, and on to the next step.